Okay, so in this lesson, we're gonna learn how to draw a room in one point perspective. Now, the first decision you're gonna have to make is what kind of room? Now, most uh, most of my students usually decide to do living room. I guess Just because the... I'm gonna show you how to do that doesn't mean that in this assignment, you can't uh, do something else. If you wanna do uh, a kitchen, I've had a couple kids do kitchens. They... Or if you even wanna break out and do something a little bit more crazy, like an abstract room, uh, that is fine. As long as you've got uh, walls and floors and ceilings and it's in perspective and you decorate it, uh, it's up to you how you want to do this. Um, I want to show you also how to do a checkerboard floor. So we're all the trick to doing a checkerboard floor is uh, adding in this little bisector line, and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. All right, so let's get into this. You're gonna need a pencil, you're gonna need a ruler, eraser, uh, black marker, and some sort of color. I'm gonna use watercolor for today. So let's get started with the uh, pencil. So in order to start your room, you're gonna start with the back wall. Um, now, for the sake of simplicity, my suggestion would be to make it exactly 12 uh, centimeters wide. So we'll start by making a rectangle that's 12 centimeters on the bottom. So this is the back wall of my room. Next, we're gonna put my vanishing point in. Now the vanishing point is whatever your eye level is gonna be. So if you imagine if you were standing against this wall, maybe your eye level would be somewhere around there. We can exper You can experiment later by uh, moving the vanishing point around, but for today, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Stick it right there in the middle. Next, we're gonna draw the rest of my room using my vanishing point and the corners of this back wall. Now, so all you do is go from the vanishing point to each corner and draw the line. Now, very important, you'll notice that those lines I drew did not go to the corners of the paper. You're not trying to get to the corners of the paper. You're going from the vanishing point for these corners of that, uh, of your back wall. All right, so now I've got my basic room in there. Let's add in the checkerboard floor. Now, there's a reason I made that exactly 12 centimeters on the bottom so that I can make uh, my checkerboard line up and have them be the exact size of two centimeters each. Now from each one of these dots that I made at two centimeters, we're gonna go from the vanishing point to make my checkerboard floor. Now if you just wanted a striped floor, you're done. But we're going for a little bit fancier. Okay, so now we're gonna put my first line in for my checkerboard. Take, now, imagine that you had a square here, so there's like sort of roughly a square shape. We're gonna cut it in half, since we're looking at it at an angle. So about half the width uh, uh, of a of a perfect square. Now we're gonna add that thing I talked about before called the bisector line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from this corner of this square to this corner of this square. I'm just gonna put my ruler right along there and that's where my bisector is gonna go. What I'm gonna do each time I run into another line I'm just gonna make a little mark. Each one of these marks is where I put my horizontal line. And there we go. So what you'll see is as they get closer, the squares are getting bigger. Next, let's start adding in some furniture. Uh, I'm gonna start by putting in a sofa. Now, how do you make a sofa in 3D? So if you imagine, you wanna start with the side of something, so if I look at a sofa in its essence, that's sort of it from the side, and then we're just gonna go back towards the vanishing point and then finish it off, just like we did in those last few videos. So, I'm gonna stick that right over here. Now again, if you're feeling really comfortable with this, uh, you can try something a little bit fancier. If you're not feeling so comfortable with this, just go ahead and copy along with what I'm doing. There's the side of my sofa, and now we're gonna go back towards the vanishing point. Again, if this is confusing and you haven't done my previous videos, make sure to check out, maybe you should jump back and do uh, the first two in this series about three-dimensional design. All right, so I've got a basic sofa there, and it looks super lame and uncomfortable. Once you've got the basics in there, you can start going in and decorating it however you want. You can add little feet, little cushions, you can round it. You know, it's up to you. You can add a cat. 
cat. All right, so uh, it's a boring room. They need a TV. Let's put a TV over there. How big should we make our TV? Enormous. Yes, you're right. Enormous. We should make an enormous TV. So we got to do the same thing. We got to think about how it looks from the side. So if I look at a TV from the side, it looks sort of like that. There's sort of the TV part. It kind of sticks out a little bit like that. So we're going to start with this and then go back to the vanishing point to finish off our TV. So there's my TV from the side, and we're gonna go back towards the vanishing point. And we can put some little decoration. Now anything on this back wall is gonna be facing straight towards you, so you don't need to worry about the perspective as much since it is pointed straight at you, so it just goes straight geometrically. So let's add a, add a door in there, let's try and make it interesting. Little cat door so our cat can go outside. And we're looking pretty good. All right, uh, let's put a window in, nice and big. And we can do a, sort of a picture in a picture here. Now, if you remember from our last lesson, anywhere the vanishing point is, that's about where the horizon line is gonna be. But from there, we can go in and add stuff. It's almost like doing like a little tiny picture inside your picture. So we can have a, maybe a little house going there, going back towards the vanishing point. We can have some trees. Anything that's organic, you don't have to worry about the vanishing point quite as much. So things like trees or cats or monkeys. Uh, let's get a little bit fancier. Let's put a shelf up here. Now shelves are actually pretty hard to do. So let's see how we can do that. We're gonna start with the sides of the shelves. And then we're gonna go back towards the vanishing point from all three corners. And then finish it up. So we start with the side, then do the underside. So let's go there, and then horizontal. So there's a basic shelves in there. If you want, you can decorate them. Some books up there, maybe another cat. Mm, looks a little empty in here, let's make a table. So just like everything else, we're gonna start table, start with the sides, and then go back towards the vanishing point. Let's get a little fancy, we're gonna make this a transparent glass table. What? Yeah, let's do it. Starting with the sides, going back towards the vanishing point. Now what I'm gonna do this time is I'm not gonna erase the stuff on the inside, so I'll be able to see the uh, everything through the table. So I'm actually gonna do the back edge of this table as well, since I would be able to see the actual sides of the glass. But none of the lines here I'm actually going to erase. Okay. So there's my glass part, and then I can add in some uh, table legs underneath. Back ones will be a little bit smaller than the ones in the front. Uh, just to make sure that it looks like a table, we could put something on it, put some magazines. So I'm looking pretty good. Oh, you know, then you can get into the little details is kind of what makes it look more like a real room. So kind of look around the room you're in and look for things that you, you need, like light switches, or you know, you can have uh, some kind of cool lamp on the ceiling.
All right, when you're feeling pretty good about it, you can come show it to the teacher. If we give you the thumbs up, you'll go into the next page, which is inking it. So let's ink away. Uh, remember, you got the two-sided inkers in my classroom. You got the thick side and the skinny side. I'm gonna go thick side for the big lines and big objects and skinny side for smaller details. All right, let's go for it. And if you notice, I didn't ink uh, these parts. Uh, I want them to look a little bit different, um, so I'm gonna just do those with watercolor. Ooh, I should ink this part though first. And lastly, let's get in there and do some color. I'm gonna use my watercolor set. And let's do a little fast forward, you can take a look. I did not do a good job on this Pikachu over here. I'm sorry, Pikachu. I did not uh, take the time to do a good job. Uh, Draggy, I'll see if I can clean you up a little bit. We'll see. We have to we do some work on this. Pikachu? Pika, Pika. Pika. Pika, Pika. Pika, Pika. Pikachu. I don't know. It's a little better. You know what? Just just stick that dancing Pikachu video up there. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, next time we're going to come back, we're going to get into the final assessment, and we are uh, going to talk about some concepts, uh, so make sure to check back for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit those little buttons down there. I'm trying to get my viewers up. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.